Hello folks, the Fox is in, the ACUs have just gated in to this map and we have a rather long game today so if you haven't already just pause the video now just just go get a drink or uh, go use the loo whatever it is you need to do but make sure you're ready to settle in for a long haul on this one as this game is going to be an epic and you can tell how epic it is already because it's a 6v6. This is not a ladder game. This is a custom game that people have played, as you can tell by the, the quite uh, wide range of, uh, of uh, skill points in the players. And if we look at our two teams, we won't be able to zoom in on them too far because they're quite spread out. But starting with the purple team, we have Drunk Warden here is UEF, 1100 rated. We have Han Solo in the deep purple, 1200 rated Cybran. In the orange, we have Peacekeeper, and they're in this front position that looks out onto the water, and you can see the ACUs coming forward here to collect these big rocks for, for reclaim and also to put down their naval factory. Oh, no, they're going to skirt the rocks. No, they decided the rock was important, but they're going to put down this naval factory right away. I think getting, given the how much water there is on this map, getting your toes into the water early is going to be very important and it does look like peacekeepers a little ahead of their opposite number darth sand uh, but going around the players some more white here with land this is empire day who is in the cyber and tech and then in the lavender random five four three and uh, they're another uef player and then at the back in the air slot with the first air factory in this lovely lime color is tomimo tokoso and they've started getting the tree claim there. On the other side of the map, we see uh, some uh, a very uh, expansive uh, aggression here. The calm walking under the water. There, there are quite a few civilians in the center, so perhaps they're uh, going to that, or perhaps they just want to get these rocks while they still can. But there we see Darth Sand, who is playing a Seraphim. Darth Sand is the one who suggested the replay. And we can see they've gone first land, but they're also prepping an, an air factory there. Uh, on the peninsula, in the navy blue, is Nate311. And they're the lowest rated player today. They're playing Cybrant, but maybe they'll be relatively safe on the peninsula. In the backwater slots, we've got Honest Mistake in the yellow. Uh, also quite low rated in yellow, and they're playing a Cybrant as well. And then in the very back in the air slot, Cool Hand Luke 45 is in red. And they're 900 rated, so still relatively low, but uh, coming up towards the middle more there. And then looking up, I Make War On You is in the slate, 1600. And they're just starting off an air transport. They're going to drop some engineers. And we'll come and look at where that's going in a moment. Just after we've introduced Cheesecake Milk at 1400, who is UEF. Uh, and they are in the other naval slot. And they've, uh, they're just getting their first naval factory down. And we see two commanders coming forward on the other side there for the, the purple team. I am going to call them purple and yellow just because that's what they are shown as in the scoreboard. But yeah, we've got two commanders coming forward. We've got Han Solo and Peacekeeper. And the drop comes out here, ready to mop up all this tasty reclaim from the center, but they're gonna put down uh, quite a few factories first. They'll let them churn out even more engineers and, uh, and possibly some defenses that they might well need when they see what uh, what is coming in here. However, another drop coming out from Han Solo, also putting down some engineers, but they're going straight for the reclaim. We see the reclaim in this area quite extensive uh, at least 4,000 maybe 5,000 just on the beach and the water alone over the rest of the island you see there's quite huge chunks dropping dropped about 500 300 and so if we zoom out a bit we see overall on the island we've got uh what six uh eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 11 12 13 14, 15, maybe 16k reclaim just on this central island. So you can see why the players have made a beeline for that. And then if we look around the rest of the map, it is quite generous reclaim overall. There's um, big collections of the rocks that we saw earlier. There's a lot of tree claim. Um, 
in this corner we've got them uh, dotted about in the hundreds and so we see cheesecake has uh, come up to try and cement this corner and drunk warden is going to be fighting with them however let's just focus right now on the rock and sock and robots in the center here as both teams have brought comms up Han Solo very aggressively trying to take out the Slate Factories from I Make War On You. But Dalsan trying to defend. Uh, Dalsan falling back really, uh, seeing Peacekeeper approaching. But, um, but Han Solo dropped down into the yellow there. Definitely using the Commander's health as a resource. But we see already the effect of Navy as Peacekeeper's early Navy coming in. One frigate and one sub for now. The sub will uh, help to dissuade any commanders who think they can hide in the water here. Whereas the frigate is just bombarding these factories. That, you know, they don't do huge DPS, but it's certainly enough to uh, to wear out any factories that are left unattended. And that one's not going to complete. But now it's looking like Darth Sand's in a bit of trouble here. Using the rocks for cover, or the cliffside rather, for cover so they don't have to fight both commanders at once. But um, they're down into the yellow. All of these comms are naked. It's very early to be having an upgrade, so none of them have yet. They've prioritized pushing up and getting established in the center, or at least denying the center to the enemies. And so this early slate expansion is looking completely lost now, with two commanders from the purple team mopping this up alongside the frigate and some T1 lands as well. Darth Sand does have some artillery coming in, but that this isn't going to be enough to achieve anything on its own. It's a bit of a backup for the comm. However, Han Solo kind of standing still in the artillery fire. They're a little slow to react. They took some unnecessary damage, but now they're just coming in. They're going to wipe out this artillery without even getting into range of Darth Sands here. Oh, now they've gone into range. They want to try and exert some pressure, try and convince Darth Sam to fall back, and they've done so. So a bit costly there for Darth Sam being quite far forward. They lost a few of their artillery. Maybe if they'd waited until they, these ones had been there as well, they could have achieved a bit more. But they're going to keep pushing and keep trying to force Han Solo back off this position. But while Han Solo is fighting at the front, Peacekeeper has been... Uh, pacifying this area. And so there's nothing really left for Darth Sand to fight for here. They, they, they are not going to push two commanders off this position. I think this reclaim is going to go to the purple team. So as this side is cooling down a bit, we look up into this corner where a more static battle position has been drawn up. As we saw earlier, Cheesecake in the pink has gone for playing directly onto the corner. That's a good go strategy there. Back in the center, Han Solo is looking in a lot of danger here, under 3,000 hit points, but they're walking away. Meanwhile, Peacekeeper is still being very aggressive, pushing forward. But do they know they're pushing into a load of T1 units from Darth Sand? Uh, looks like uh, entirely artillery. And the artillery is lining up on the commander, and they're knocking its health down. Under 7,000 there. And is Peacekeeper paying attention? Yes. They've started to move out of the way. They're dodging the shots. They want to get this factory down. But they're still taking artillery fire. And they're down into the red now. Less than 2,000. They're running away to the water maybe. But not by the shortest route. They're still hugely under threat here. And they don't even make it to the water. Very successful snipe with T1 artillery there. And so Peacekeeper takes an early bath will not be contributing for the rest of this game, except maybe with uh, pointing things out with pings and chats. They still have some navy left in this area, but it's going to be handed over to another player. Oh, well, it's not even going to make it. It's going to be mopped up by the slate-colored navy from I Make War On You before it even gets the chance to be handed over. And now it is Han Solo's factories here that are looking under threat. I don't think they're going to be able to fight off. They don't have any ships on the way in, so I don't think they're going to be able to fight off these frigates, but the frigates are not pushing in any closer to try and uh, claim another factory here. And, um, and Dalsan feels secure enough to go for their own gun upgrade. 
But back up to this corner. Tech 2 point defense has come up here for Drunk Warden. And it looks like PD creep might be the order of the day. Both of the common upgrades have finished. And Cheesecake seeing that they actually need to push out here. They can't just let the PD creep win. And so they're focusing the T2 point defense. And it looks like they're going to get it. Oh. No. Drunk Warden has started repairing. They're still going to go down though. They can't out repair the damage. But they are going to use that opportunity to get some shots in on Cheesecake. Take about 3k health off them there. And Cheesecake wants to fall back to their point, their own point defense, but it was already taken out. And now as Drunk Warden has their land coming in, this is looking like a very tenuous situation for Cheesecake. And Cheesecake's really in trouble here. They are not only going to lose their factory, they're going to lose the ACU. And there we go. There was no way they were making that back to the water. And so our second ACU death in just over 10 minutes there. And now this area is completely free for Drunk Warden to expand. On the bottom right, a bit of a push coming out for Empire Day. Both Empire Day and Nate have landed on this island and they do not want to share it. But uh, Empire Day has been building military units, whereas it looks like Nate only has the T2 Air Factory here, which is a, a nice place for building gunships or uh, fighter bombers, but not very useful really for holding the island itself. And it looks like they might lose everything here. And without any commanders to um, uh, to defend it anymore, it looks like Dalsan's going to be allowed to mop up the rest of this and keep this island, at least for now. Honest mistake here, coming out with some fighter bombers and some... Uh, engineers retreating here, coming back to aid the shipyard. So we see a uh, destroyer out for Empire Day. And that was just doing some bombardments onto the land here. And also a cruiser. So Empire Day well established in T2 Navy here. Uh, we can also see Han Solo has gone up to T2 Navy. And on the other side, so has I Make War on You. But only one factory so far heavily assisted. And so they've got their... Valiant Destroyer coming out there. And, uh, oh yes, and also the Yellow Navy of Honest Mistake is up to T2. And they're bringing out their first T2 ships. But it does look like for now it's the purple team that has the naval advantage. And they're pushing out to the center. Dalsan's commander is going to be under threat from cruiser fire very soon. If we take a quick look at the scores, a bit of an advantage for the purple team here uh, on Eco 40 mass per tick, maybe 50. And it's mostly Han Solo who's powering that in the deep purple. Despite just losing the center, they were obviously able to use that investment to, uh, to tech up. Yeah, they've got lots of T2 mexes in the home base. And so that's a good economic advantage. And the rest of the team is behind a bit. If, if we look, we can compare like Han Solo on 170 Empire Day on less than half that at 80. Whereas on the, on the yellow team, I Make War on You is the leader economically. Uh, and in fact, they're outmassing Han Solo at the moment, but that's mainly because they inherited all of this down the left side. Big naval engagement going on in the center. Not big in the sense of lots of units, but there's definitely more units from the purple team than from the yellow team. And I Make War on Use Navy is being pushed back here.
Uh, so then this is going to make the center island dangerous again, as now it is the purple team who have the means to bombard the island from a relatively safe position with their navy. Some frigates there trying to hold the line, but that's really not enough against the four destroyers, a few subs, and a cruiser who are now raining down hate onto the islands, causing a lot of attrition to Darth Sand's T1 lands units. But the slate colored destroyers coming in, very scrappy engagements. A drop coming out of Honest Mistake here. Going for this island with hostile structures already on it. The engineers want to reclaim this point defense, but I don't think Honor's Mistake really thought that through. They didn't realize perhaps that the point defense would fire on them. They thought it was uh, going to be idle. And the transport gets away, but the engineers pay for that mistake with their lives. We've not really seen a lot of air yet. There's been some scouts flying around and a few airdrops, of course. Um, both sides have gone into interceptors and, and they seem to have been racing to tech up to T3 air as both Cool Hand Luke and Tomimo Tokoso in the air slots have uh, got ASFs out on the field. Perhaps they're just going to go straight to a strategic bomber snipe at some point, but not yet. So we can see that Darth Sand is losing some of their production capacity on this center island, but at the same time, they're breaking out across the water with their hover tanks. And they're going to be attacking Han Solo's front. And there's no navy at the back to stop them, really. One cruiser and a destroyer, and a few more have been called back now. And it looked like they were going to just go straight up onto land to attack the economy, but it looks like they want to destroy the naval capacity instead. All the DPS going onto this uh, naval factory, which is now half health, and it looks like they'll be able to wipe that out. Uh, having done that, they really want to get up on this land away from the destroyers while they still can. And they're taking out power. Lots of economic damage going on here. Meanwhile, Random, who basically hasn't contributed yet, is building a nuke silo. They've taken out some mexes, but not these most upgraded ones at the front. There's a T3 mex there. That T2's uh, paused. It's got the upgrade queued. Taking out some T1 power. They missed the hydrocarbon plant, but they're going back to mop that up. They're under gunship fire, so they've got a very limited time that they can get something. They really need to do as much as they can in that time. I think splitting the force would be very good to get these outlying mexes. Um, and these ones up here. And of course, obviously, it's a lot harder for gunships to engage. But they've come back into range of the cruiser fire now, and that's the end of that attack. But it has done a lot of damage here. We've got three unoccupied mass points here. Uh, a lot of PGENs have gone down. And of course, the... Uh, the, the Navy went down as well. Um, Han Solo does have a second T2 HQ over here, thanks to having two bases. But um, yeah, it's really going to limit how much they can uh, be producing Navy. And having lost a few units to an engagement at the front here with uh, I Make War on You, it's going to be very hard for them to reinforce now. And we do see now there's some combat going on at this island uh, or peninsula. It's not really an island. As one of the Cybran destroyers from Honest Mistake has come up from the left here. I mean, I say one of them. But there's now two of them, but it's also all of them. Uh, as Honest has been uh, building up at the back here. They do have a second uh, naval factory at the front now. But anyway, and has been bombarding this uh, white formation from Empire Day that was lining up for an attack. However, it's not been quite enough. They do still have greater numbers on the white side here than on the blue side. And 
They're going to be able to push in some of these anti-air, which are not very useful in the current engagements. It, I think it's a shame that these gunships have been brought off here. They really could be doing a number on the destroyers, and that would have saved a lot of a lot of needless unit losses. Uh, Random 543 in the Lavender, who has not really been uh, engaged so far, says, Scout, now I have a nuke. And we're 20 minutes in, which you, you might think, if you're used to playing 2v2 or 3v3, you might think 20 minutes is a bit early for a nuke, but don't forget we've got not only an air player in the slot at the back, but also we've got this Lavender slot here, and they have not been fighting at all. So they, they've easily had the chance to tech up an eco up and get a nuke in this time. Uh, whereas their opposite number has not done that, but has been taking up to T2 Navy. Um, has been ecoing up quite uh, substantially as well. Um, speaking of eco, the eco lead is still on the purple side, but it's now increased to about 300k, uh, 300k, th about 300 mass per tick. And uh, never mind the reclaim figures. Yeah, let's look at the income. And we see mainly Han Solo, who's powering it, still for their team. And mainly I make war on you. And if we take a quick look at what they inherited, a lot of these uh, mexes have been upgraded to T2. Some of them have been lost, though, as uh, Drunk Warden is now free to push out from the, the center, uh, the center line base here. And so skirmishing all over the map at this point, it's hard to know what to focus on. Darth Sound pushing in here, wants to take out the shipyards again probably, but this time with actual navy rather than hover tanks. And they have uh, they have done the submerged destroyer thing, so they've been able to get they turn their destroyers into submarines and get past the uh, the white destroyers and cruisers. And the scout has gone out, and the nuke comes out from Lavender, and that's got to lead to some panicking on the other side. Uh oh, says Honest Mistake. Um, obviously, as Random's opposite number, they're probably uh, the first in line to get a nuke, as, as players do often tend to target their opposite numbers first. But it's not going for them. It looks like it's going to go for Darth Sands or maybe to the back to Cool Hand Luke. And let's see where's it going. Who is in the sights of this nuke? And it flies straight over Darth Sands base. So it looks like it's going to be at the back and it looks like maybe this air grid is for it. Cool Hand Luke. They have been starting on some gunships. They've got a nice air grid. Wouldn't it be a shame if something were to happen to it? I make war and you says, oh, I don't have sand. They were hugely confused by where the uh-ohs were coming from. And it's because they did not realize there was a nuke on the way. That's, uh, that's a, a big problem for them. And so now, Cool Hand Luke lost their comm, lost the air grids. The air grids, well, what remains of it has been, well, it was handed over to I make war and you who, who's decided to pass that to Darth Sands. Um, entirely logical to, to share the load there. But now, going to be a bit of an APM deficit for Darth Sand, I think, as they have to pay a little less attention to their fighting in the center and try to rebuild what's going on here. Because obviously, one, two, three, four, five, six mass points at the back here have been lost, as well as all the production capacity. They're really going to want to get that going again. Han Solo's Navy is here to defend, but they're looking hugely outnumbered in this fight. They do have a few subs and some more ships, mainly cruisers coming down from up north. But they are losing everything very quickly. Han Solo's ACU is now in a very dangerous position. They do have the stealth upgrade and torpedo, but they're in the water surrounded by enemy ships. The submarine killers are here to defend, but they can't help for long. And now finally the shots are going in on Han Solo. Han Solo's walking away, but where are they walking to? There's only cliffs around this side. They can't go anywhere that will free them from the torpedoes that are coming in. 
and the combined fleets of I Make War On You and Darth Sands are now loading the damage in. Torpedo after torpedo, slamming into Han Solo, who's now down into the red. They do have their own torpedoes re returning fire, but the, the Kaminos torpedoes are just not enough for this Navy. And finally, boom. Han Solo, who was looking like one of the stronger players on the purple team, and certainly if you believe the scores was the strongest player, uh, has been eliminated from this fight. But as another nuke comes out for random, and I don't think any nuke defense has been constructed, it's been put pretty quick. There's nothing there. Uh, I, I'm not seeing any. Oh, no, I'm seeing one there, but it's not loaded yet. Um, uh, perhaps Nate's more likely to have one. There's some pings coming out. Yeah, they've got one, but it's also not loaded. So, And it is coming to them now. So they're not going to have time to load that. They're running their calm away. They might just about escape it. And the calm escapes the blast, but that's the, the core base that is completely gone. And the slate-colored navy of I Make War On You producing a lot of shore bombardments on a very besieged-looking position from Drunk Warden. And if we look at what was Han Solo's base and is now Drunk Warden's base, the same kind of situation is going on. A shipyard falls. The T3HQ looks like it'll be next. There's a few of those submarine killers here to defend. And actually, there's enough of them here that they, they might get some work done, but I don't think they can kill the destroyers fast enough. That factory HQ is getting repaired by four engineers and by all of the hives, but it's just not enough. And that means the Drunk Warden has now been pushed out of the water. They don't have any shipyards now to build Navy. And the subs that they do have are probably going to get mopped up. However, they do have an Atlantis coming out. Also, destroyers from Honest Mistake making their way up this path here. And they're going to take out... I don't know why there's a stealth field generator here. That feels a bit pointless, but... Um, they're going to be taking out these uh, pretty undefended mexes. Oh, but gunship's coming in. And I wonder if the remaining air force... Oh, yeah. Their own ASFs, you can see on the minimap, are coming in to help defend here. They're, um, they're getting there a bit late. It looks like one destroyer might go down before they can take out the gunships. And our first experimental now comes out from Tomimo. And as they're the rear player in the air slot, I wonder what it's going to be. And it's a monkey. And I feel like maybe that's a bad choice. If it's, you know, Obviously, they're building it right at the back. Where's it going to go to? And I lied. That wasn't the first experimental. We've already had an Atlantis on the field for Drunk Warden. So the, the purple team here making use of the economic advantage that they have enjoyed throughout this game. It's, it's a bit narrower now with uh, the, the front base here uh, from Han Solo having been lost. But... Um, and it's now even, which is a pretty good comeback from Team Yellow, especially considering how much they've lost to nukes recently. But they, they have enjoyed an economic advantage for a while, and they've put that into experimentals as well as into nukes. And so now they have some experimentals on the field. And the Atlantis is spamming out torpedoes while taking basically no fire in return. It's not really going fast enough, though. I, I like this slate navy. It has been allowed to take out T3 mexes here on Drunk Warden's front line or Drunk Warden's coastline. And while that's not the only base that Drunk Warden has, it's one that they inherited, that's still a big economic loss, closing the gap further. But uh, if you quickly look on the minimap, you can see a Novax has just finished there for random 543. 
clearly going on the long range combat and so that will be coming out soon. And the sub now taking fire. It's just not enough on its own really you think against the whole navy. Oh, I didn't see how the destroyers over here were finished off, but we can see wrecks on lands, and they did get quite far up there. Perhaps taken out by the artillery here. Nice coastal defences. T2, T2 artillery is pretty worthwhile for defending your coastline. Um, so let's see if Empire Day tries to get back into Navy at this point. I mean, they do have a, a, a naval factory but it's just one. They're sending some T3 engineers out, but really they want to be taking Strategic the reclaim. And the next nuke comes out. Uh, if we look over here, still no strategic missile defense for Honest Mistake. And they could be the next target, um, or it could be Doth Sandler. They're probably loaded by now. Yeah, they're loaded. So any nuke flying over this area is going to get lost. And that looks like a Novax coming in as well. Yes, a Novax for random, but it looks like the nuke is headed for I Make War On You. It is their turn now. Strategic launch detected. And a second one comes out almost immediately. The anti-nuke, it fires, but it is now unloaded. So if the second one is headed for the same place, it will probably get through. Oh, they are like two thirds loaded, but I, I don't think they've got enough build power on this to actually finish it off in time. Well, there they go. Now they're putting more on it. But still, it's pretty slow going. So, will it complete in time? The nuke is coming in. I'm not even looking at the conventional warfare at this stage. Even though Drunk Warden, you can see on the minimap, Drunk Warden is still losing all of their coastline to the, uh, the, slate, to, uh, the slate navy and the Atlantis has already been sunk. But this nuke is going to land. And that's a lot of economy and production taken out for Darth Sand. But like the losses on Drunk Warden, they have quite an extensive base and they've got a lot of stuff further forward here. So it's not going to knock them out of the game the same as the earlier nukes on, uh, on Nate and on um, Cool Hand Luke. So the Novak satellite is here. It's looking at some shields at the moment. Bit of a waste. So Novax is not going to break through the shield on its own. Oh, I, <laughs> they're saying that a second one is coming across. Novax is mainly useful either for taking out outlying mixes like this, just to make sure you, you can't have those if you're not going to shield. Just four shields everywhere, or in combination with T3 artillery. Um, to make sure you can capitalize better when the shields blink off. But it's just looking very bad for Drunk Warden's base here. And their commander is, is very much in the firing line. They're trying to slope away before they get noticed. The, the tactical missile defense is uh, plenty, but it's not helping with the artillery bombardments. And uh, another nuke taken out here as it flew over Darth Sand's base. And Darth Sand still has one in the clip here. And they're loading two at once. So they are still fairly safe there. And we see the coastal artillery working here. But there's a lot of naval bombardment. I, I think it's it's fair to say that the yellow team has won navy at this time. And they are using that to dominate pretty much. But it's a battle of the naval fires versus the nukes and Novaks, really. And now if we look at the top left, I Make War On You has been building up this force of Titans for some time. It's quite substantial. 
and it's now pushing in on Drink Warden's position. Drink Warden only has a few Percy's to defend here. Percy's perhaps not the best choice against a wave of Titans. They are managing to get the damage in, but they're not stopping the wave from advancing. Titans are inside the shield. And they destroy the shield generator. Doesn't look like they're going to get the factory, though. So not really clear who won that engagement, as the Titans did manage to do damage, but it's also just been a bit of a mass donation, and the Percy's are still here to defend this area. And if you're on the yellow team right now, the water is probably the safest place to be, as look at this overwhelming naval force that they have here. And now you can see yellow is on a, a 200 mass per tick advantage. And they've really turned around the economic situation. And they, they've used this uh, this advantage, well, they've used their naval advantage for Darth Sand to bring quite an army of siege tanks, all shielded, up here. And they want rid of these Novaxes. Broadswords come in to try and combat them. They're, they're not really doing enough against the shields yet, but as the shields walk into random shields, they become ineffective. And there is really quite a lot of point defense here, as well as a load of support commanders who've now been taken off building a bad boy in order to fight back. So this is now hanging on a knife edge. And the Mega coming out from Honest Mistake, also getting into the fray here. Perhaps not quite in its firing arc there. But everything now being thrown at these Othoams to try and defend this attack and to keep the Novaxes safe. Also Naval coming around from the other side to try and bombard. But that's a lot of shields and tank missile defense for them to get through. Perhaps they'd be better off bombarding the support commanders over here. And so now the land forces from Darth Sand have been completely wiped out. There's still a few in the water back here who didn't engage. But not a shot was landed. Oh, maybe on this one. But uh, yeah, basically no damage done at all to these Novaxes. A lot of defending units and, and point defense lost. So it's been softened up for another attack maybe. But there, the, the yellow team just can't mount another attack of that scale right now. And so it looks like random 543 is going to be allowed to rebuild and to uh, increase their defenses. And there are also tons of Ravagers at the back here, picking off any ship that gets too close, as well as a fat boy. You know, a fat boy is basically a battleship on wheels or on tracks instead of on the water. And so turnabout is fair play here, and this has forced off all of the, the Navy here to stand off range with only the cruisers engaging and the destroyers are not doing anything. Those cruiser missiles just don't have enough to break through the walls of attack missile defense. I think some, some scouting here probably needed to allow the fat boy to lock on. Yeah, you just can't even see how much navy is there. Um, so a bit of scouting is needed for that. However, it looks like Empire Day has pretty much lost their base to the naval bombardment. The commander's still alive, and it's surrounded by cliffs on both sides, which is helping to keep it safe, but uh, it's not very safe, especially as more of those walking destroyers are up on land, and they're closing on the commander. And they're now firing on the commander. Empire Day running away, wants Sanctuary from Random. And I did notice the new coming out there. Don't worry about that. We'll look at it in a minute. It's crossing the map, and we'll see whether it manages to land or not. But right now, the fight is here, and Empire Day has already taken some damage. But it'll... Ooh, that's pretty bad. They're on half health. Are they going to make it back? However, if we look at the other side quickly, the nuke is coming down, and it's coming down on Nate, who already lost everything to one nuke, and then lost a lot to Novaxes. And they have 
now lost their main base again. The commander's safely in the water over here, but they're, they're not really going to be contributing very much for a while. But what we missed while we were looking at that is that Empire Day was not able to make it to the safety of random shields and got wiped out there. And so now, actually, Random's looking hugely in trouble. There's more pressure. The Chunky Lad's in full retreat. There's a lot more cruisers coming up, and they're spamming up more attack missile defense to try and uh, to try and stabilize the situation. I don't know why they're building a Novax here. This is the absolute worst place for it. I'm not even sure what the Novax is doing right now. Oh, yeah, they're, they're on Honest Mistake. They want to stop this Yellow Navy in its tracks. There's also a nuke coming in. Oh, but it, uh, it got defended against there. So a lot of nukes have been defeated, and I think. Really, what we'd like to see for this team is a bit more scouting. We need to find good nuke targets and uh, a capability to snipe nukes. Um, to snipe anti-nukes, sorry. Strategic launch detected. Another nuke comes out now. Random senses that they're in a very precarious situation here with naval on one side, land force on the other side, and they've been compressed into a tiny space and the shields are starting to blink out and Novax falls. Um, we don't know if this one under construction is going to be able to complete. The shields keep blinking out. Um, another nuke is on its way out. Like a defensive nuke would have been really worthwhile here. Probably could have been the best play for random actually. And as we hear the incredibly loud explosions of support commanders in random space, dying to naval bomb bomb in there, there's a nuke on its way in, Tonus Mistake, but the anti-nuke comes out just in time. Uh, we look, that was the last one. There isn't another one loaded for Honest Mistake, so another nuke could take out that base. Darth Sand, uh, Darth Sand does have a few loaded in their base, so they'll be safe for now. So another nuke defeated there. A megalith under the water here for Tamimo. That's it's just getting talked by submarines. It's um, this needs to do something. Fireboy lining up side on, which means it's only firing with two of its guns there. That's a bit of a shame. It really needs to turn around here. But you know, I, I, again, we've said before, random is the lowest ranked player. Oh no, they're not the lowest ranked player in the game, but they're the lowest ranked player on this side. And so you've got to forgive some microing errors, given how effective they've been with their strategic missiles and attacking up. And now at having this bastion here that has defended them for quite a substantial bombardment there. And this nuke comes out. It looks like it might get caught by Darth Sand's strategic missile defense again. Yep, there it goes. Boom. Nuke defeated. And it looks like Random really wants to get rid of Honest Mistake Space. There's a lot of shields and they've not been able to penetrate it with Novax. So the Novax is coming out here onto the Navy instead. Uh, though perhaps it's trying to chase Nate's commander, but... Like nice commanders Strategic under the water, uh, um, and they're effectively out of the game anyway, so not really worth doing much. This uh, the megalith is pushing forward, so megaliths do have torpedoes, um, as do monkey lords. And uh, finally, we see the defensive nuke coming in. Boom! Uh, Navy gone. However, there's still quite a lot a bit further south, maybe a, a slightly further down placement there, but without the scouting to see where the Navy is, uh, if we look at their vision there. Oh, they do have radar. But yeah, um, Megalith walks away pretty unscathed, and it's still torpedoing. So we do now see Darth Sand uh, perhaps redeploying their battleships here to come round to the other side to, to start that bombardment again. Um, also, Darth Sand's land units, they're not attacking this fortress again, but they want to take out Tamimo, who is much less well defended and has not one, not two, but three strategic missile launchers. None of them are loaded.
The broadswords are engaging the shields here, but the shields have become separated from the units they're supposed to be protecting. So this is uh, uh, like a bit of a wasted engage here. They should just go right on the Othuims, the, the TPC tanks, while they're unshielded. And the Chonky Lad here coming north out of Random Space to also put in some damage and make this crossing very dangerous and costly for Dodd Sands. But uh, Dodd Sands has enough stuff to be pushing more in. Also pushing in a load of T1 engineers here. Um, perhaps going for some cheeky reclaim. There is quite a lot of reclaim in this area. And Random's not being able to take it at all. Um, they have been under bombardment the, the whole time, so they've not been able to get engineers out of the shields. We see we just uh, saw one there. Oh, it wasn't an engineer, it was one of the little drones. Their Atlantis has been pung, but it's defended by the underwater megalith, which is something I, I never thought I'd say. And so it does look like, especially with that defensive nuke taking out the Navy on the right side here, it looks like this assault has kind of lost its momentum. Um, Dalton committing their units up north here, but they've they've not made it through. They took out one mechs, but um, that's a very expensive way to destroy one mechs. Uh, Drunk Warden's gunships have landed there, which is a bit of a shame, but they won't be needed. Um, a little damage got done on that megalith, but um, yeah, attack repelled. And so now we just have to see what is Team Yellow going to come up with next. I feel they've very much been on the front foot with the conventional engagements. There's been almost no pressure coming out of Team Purple for quite a long time now. And what's next? It's a strap snipe. And are they going for the Commander or are they going for the Mega? They're going for the Commander. There's a lot of sounds that they have to fly over. However, the bombs are coming off. The smaller shield goes down. The larger shield goes down. The Commander has not yet received any damage. And it looks like the sounds took out all of those bombers. So they're not going to get a second pass here. And Tamimo entirely unscathed by that snipe attempt and their shield is starting to come back up. Darth Sand also going for air over here. Um, they figure if Random's base is too defended by land and by sea, let's try it by air. But there's also a few Sams in the base, perhaps not enough for a strat snipe. I feel like if the strats had come over in this direction, they might have got a bit more done. Backup SMD being hung. And this one is loaded. And there's also a Mavor uh, being rushed up here by I Make War On You. I Make War On You um, uh, uh, that has been quietly working away in the north and trying to get through Drunk Warden's what was their main base. However, they, they do seem to have most of their stuff over here now. But other than that did not really contribute much. Oh, well, they lost a lot of their Navy over here, but they didn't really contribute that much to the attack on random. And um, what have they been working on instead? Well, they've been working on a Mayfort, which is about three quarters done. More than that. Mass says, I, w I make war on you. But under this artillery bombardment, it's going to be the power to keep their shields up that's the problem. Nuke Silo nearly dies to Novax there, but... Uh, the, the Novak's beam runs out just in time. It's still in the red, and the, it finally goes down. The Army of Engineers here is uh, absorbing a lot of the Chomp Lad fire. And we see also Honest Mistake, not content with having this uh, smaller of the Middle Islands, has also landed a force over here. But over on the left side of the map, artillery is still raining down on I Make War On You from Drunk Warden. There's uh, an SMD here with loaded with one. Another one just completing now, but obviously not yet loaded. And a Mavor that is being built. Not all of the build power is on it, as the build power is focusing on the SMD. But that Mavor will be finished soon.
And all of the engineers being turned off there. I make war on you just does not have the eco to sustain this rate of building. Bit of arguing on what the target should be. Because while the shield is down, if the shield goes down to artillery bombardments, the Novaxes can kill stuff that is unshielded, but you only have a short window. Obviously, if you can kill the shield generators, then the shields won't come back up. And so you're actually doing permanent damage to the base. But random figures, actually, if they can just kill the, the SMD, then it doesn't matter what else in the base survives because there'll just be a new going that way. However, the shields are so assisted here, I feel like they're going to struggle to actually penetrate to this SMD, even with the artillery assistance, unless they manage to get some of the shield generators down first. And now the Mavor finishes, and its huge barrel unfurls or telescopes as it rotates into position. It's very dense nested shields here. And the Mavor is now up. And we see the first shots landing on random shields. So there's now quite an urgency to that attack. And it's this two Atlantises coming out and a third one being uh, being built. No, finished. Finished but hurt. I don't know what it was hurt by. But there's two coming out to try and clear the waters. Strategic launch detected. And two nukes coming out at once here from random. But where are they going? Strategic launch detected. Uh, well, one of them is definitely going over here. But the uh, perhaps just hoping to overwhelm the SMD. There's only one in the clip. So if uh, if both of those come to this area, one of them will land. Uh, so there's yeah, two more have come out from random. And also two have come out from Tamimo. So Mavor Dead says, I make war on you. Sensing... How many nukes are coming in? Out. One lands. And everything here is dead. And there's going to be more that are going to land in a crater. A bit of overkill going on here. Oh, but it looks like these ones are going to take out the T3 engineers. They just wasted like six nukes. And, and that's true. That, that was huge overkill. But... They really did need to destroy what was a, a huge threat on random. However, speaking of huge threats, this loyalist army from Honest Mistake is coming in and they've got inside the shield. There's a defensive Novax here. And they're getting inside the shields, but they're not really doing real damage. They've taken out a shield generator. They've kind of trickled in. They could have been formed up a little better, but um, yeah, just the, the, the amount of defense here is a pretty astounding. Space is pretty unbreakable by land. And so again, we have to ask, what is Team Yellow going to try next? And we see Drunk Warden now, emboldened by that success, has pushed out from their top left base. The, the slate-colored navy from I Make War On You just has nothing to do in this corner now. They, they've taken out everything there. Battlecruiser getting completely uh, ganked by uh, by three cruisers here that are just pinging it from out of range. Some reaction needed there from Drunk Warden, but Drunk Warden's too busy micoing. They've sent their navy down, they've sent their land force down, the land force is taking out everything down to here. Um, and it looks like they, they just want to oh, they just want to mop up everything that wasn't destroyed by the nuke. So the shipyards for I Make War on You are going down. The, the Duke is still raining down hate on I Make War on You's uh, main base? Can we even call this the main base? I think we can. The battle cruisers are lasering everything. There's all DPS in this area now. 
There's a lot of engineers out here. I wonder why they're not trying the reclaim. Reclaiming en enemy units is, can be a good strat if you've got enough engineers. Even if you fail, at least you've got some mass out of it. Um, however, there's also Darth Sands has a, has a Mayball as well. And this is now bombarding to Mimo's base. And they've already taken out some Mexus here. Actually, they've taken out quite a lot of stuff here. All of these shields are down. I'm betting to Mimo is... Uh, oh, I was going to say short of power, but no. Maybe the, as the shields have already gone down, they've got nothing to spend it on anymore. It does only take a brief power outage when you're under that kind of artillery bombardment. The Mabel's been punk. Scouts coming out for random space here from Darth Sand. Maybe Darth Sand looking for artillery targets there, looking for the commander. Chonky Lab pushing forward, but it doesn't have any close range defense. And the, the Chonky Lads just are not very good against units. They're great standoff weapons, but you cannot let units get close into them. And so it's it's moving backwards here. This is quite a recent balance change. The experimental units can now move backwards further. They don't need quite so much micro to roll backwards. And the bomber wave has been hung. It's been seen and it comes over to random. Random's outside of shields at the moment. The shields are down. The bombs drop and the ACU drops as well. Bro, legend, says Honest Mistake. And so now we're on to a 4v2. As this base was the, the impenetrable bastion before, well, it's now been penetrated and it has cost the purple team a player's life. Drunk Warden inherits this base, but will the base now fall? You sat kill Mavor, says Random. But Drunk Warden has just inherited a base that's already under attack. It's still pretty well defended, but there's ever more waves of T3 units coming from both Darth Sand on the left and from Honest Mistake from the bottom here. Though it looks like the, the full defend by land might well happen again. Uh, Tamimo bringing in some gunships. Meanwhile, on the left side of the map, I make war on you thinking that the water is very safe, is standing there, but doesn't see that there's quite a flotilla of Tech 1 mostly. Oh no, Tech 2 submarine killers, the Barracudas from Tamino Takoso coming in, and they're just completely torpedoing him senseless. And he hasn't even realized yet, he's not even moving the calm. And so another snipe on this side restores the balance of the game somewhat as it's now 3v2. It's amazing. I only said maybe maybe 30 minutes ago that if you are the yellow, if you're the yellow team, the, the water is the safest place to be, but that's clearly not been true for a while. The uh, Novax is heading back across the map here. A bit of salt going on in the chat, and as this is a custom game, you, you know, maybe the, the salt is a bit of funny banter. Let's not worry about that too much. Ooh, big loss there. The Duke coming down to a strap bomber snipe from Darth Sands. There was another one already under construction here, but it, I think the strats are going to get a second pass anyway. But also this has alerted us to, there's, what, three strats for Drunk Warden here. Well, there's only two left now. Oh, no, there's only three left. And they're on their way out in case they don't get another chance. And, oh, my God, you just cannot see anything happening in this game. But it sounded like a nuke landing. 
Uh, it looks like Drunk Warden's been able to stabilize a little here. Um, it's still not looking very good. They've still got their Novaxes, though. Uh, these two are going to die soon. They've whipped up a bunch of uh, a bunch of ravages here to, to stop anything that's coming in from Honest Mistake's land base here. Uh, oh yes, they're just lo losing Novaxes now, hand over fist. And this is one of those games, and I, and I think this often happens as we pass the one hour mark, where if we look at the eco, Yellow Team, despite losing so much and so many players, is still on 2.5k mass. And um, obviously the Purple Team has lost this area, this area, this area. Um, and, and so they're on less than a thousand now, but still, like a thousand is is quite a lot of eco. So we're just in this situation where teams are losing almost everything they have, but they still have enough to like fight an experimental level war. And you get this post-apocalyptic kind of situation. Where you know we've we've had the nuclear holocaust, so there's just craters everywhere. But we still have nukes. Uh, oh, Mega doing some stompy attack here, but walking very slowly across the map. Um, however, if this manga does make it onto land over here, I think it's going to get a lot done because none of the bases on this side are defended against land the same way that randoms was. And in fact, still is with the line of ravages over there. But the, um, the, the fleet of Novaxes is completely gone now and... It's very much looking like the purple team's on the back foot. They cannot maintain this kind of gameplay with uh, the eco. However, we just referred to the, the snipe force of submarines here, the barracudas, and then are rounding this headland, being pursued, well, not really pursued, being accompanied, escorted by Drunk Warden's Navy. And they're hoping to get a, another snipe here. However, if we look over to the left, we see that Dothsan's already running their calm out of the water. They know the submarines are coming and they don't want to die the same way as their comrade. So it looks like they've got plenty of time to get out of the water here and Dothsan's gonna make a, an escape here. Meanwhile, they do have some torpedo bombers to help discourage those submarines. And while we're looking at their base, we see their Mavor is still firing. But they also have here a Novax that is about three quarters complete, being very assisted by support commanders. And there it is. So now having lost their starting base to Navy, Drunk Warden's now lost their second base to Darth Sands Navy this time. As they have been very much having to focus on the base they inherited from random. And they've now got a Novax back up. I do have to think that maybe an investment in Novaks at this time when you've already forced tons of shields out of your opponents and everything is shielded. Maybe Novaks is not the best weapon. And I feel, feel like uh, there could be better options now. Like a land-focused push to actually break out of your base. You know, if you, if you could push by land south and clear this out, that would make this area a whole lot safer for Drunk Warden. They've been losing so many SCUs over here. Uh, another army of engineers coming in from Darth Sand. Like, they want the reclaim in this area, even though the reclaim is still being made. Wow. 
40k that said, 50, uh, 60 if we, 70 if we include the smaller ones, maybe 80. Yet, the purple team's been running at a huge eco disadvantage for the last 20 minutes. So as I say, it, it very much looks like the the purple team is on the back foot now. They've lost the ability to strike out at their enemies, and they've only got a few pockets of resistance left. But as always, this is Supreme Commander, and there's a lot of places where players can make a, a snap comeback, even when they've been reduced to almost nothing. And is this? Ah, oh, so turnabout again. Darth Sam getting up no backs. And that looks like it's going to head towards Tomimo's base. The, the strats coming out here for Tomimo, they were... Um, I'm not sure what they were doing up there, but they're coming south. Perhaps going for the snipe. This is part of my fault, says Honest. Didn't know my role on the map. Well, that's always fair. Especially if you're, um, you know, relatively low rated and people don't help you to know your role. You know, new players have to learn somehow. So I, I, I don't think we can blame Honest Mistake there, but uh, they're living up to their name by at least offering to take some blame. And so the Stratus Knight comes out. I'm not really sure what it's targeting. Perhaps targeting the Mavor, but it has done zero damage. They did get some bombs off onto shields, but... But that's it. At the same time, huge loads of torpedo bombers coming out here. Perhaps to snipe the two comms in the lake. Drone Corden going for a last minute teleport. Probably tally maser play. Or tally laser rather. But I don't think they're gonna get the opportunity there. The comm bomb takes out some of those torpedo bombers, but there's still plenty left to finish off to Mimo's comp. And yeah, and, and the team recalls rather than uh, let that last comm die. GG comes out at the end, and it is nice to see, especially in a game where there has been a little bit of banter or salt in the chat, it's nice to see a GG come out at the end from Honest Mistake alongside reflecting honestly on what they think they did wrong during this game. Certainly, the, the yellow team definitely made a bit of a mistake by letting random get to the level of eco that they had. And it is harder in a, a game with more players. But if you notice there is a player on the other side who just doesn't seem to have done anything, then what they have done is probably build four nukes. But really good turnaround from Team Yellow. They kept pushing against that lavender colored turtle of a base and eventually broke it so very exciting match i'm gonna say as i always do if you want to see more players playing this game if you want to see more casts and you want to see shorter queue times then tell all your friends to go play forge alliance tell them to, that supreme commander is only a, a few quid on steam tell them that forge alliance forever is free it's a fan maintained balance update for uh, Forge Alliance and tell them to like every FAF cast that they see and every Twitch stream that they see and that's how we'll get more players into the game that's how more people will see the videos more people will see, see the game more people will learn how alive the community still is today thank you for watching I hope I'll see you again soon with another game as exciting and epic as this one. Maybe less epic, maybe a shorter game, but exciting. Um, certainly, I need to go for a bit of a lie down now after all of that. But this has been Forged Lines Forever. You have been excited and appreciative. I've been Tufty Indigo. Triple Pick.